Today, the World Health Organization officially announced that this is a global pandemic. Hello, I'm Todd Allen, and on behalf of the Allens and Voice of Hope Ministry, we welcome you to night five of what we call the Global Awakening. What an effort it has been to be able to preach the gospel and sing gospel music and have it go literally around the world. So many countries, so many people have been reached by this broadcast, and we're glad that you are here to join us tonight for number uh, night number five of what God has been doing uh, through this effort. We've been on the phone with so many people, counseling and talking with people and sharing with them how they can know for sure that their sins have been forgiven and that they're on their way to heaven. We've also been able to talk with many people and heard many reports about how God is moving in their hearts to have a passion for those that are around them and wanting to share the gospel with them. And that's what revival is all about. Uh, God's people getting stirred up and being awakened out of their spiritual sleep to see the situation as it is all around us and wanting God to use us to meet the needs that are all about us. And then lost people are coming to know the Lord as a result of the gospel going forth in power. And uh, we're grateful that you're here with us tonight. Thank you so very much for your prayers and your assistance to help us to make this a tremendous success. And we're looking forward to what God is going to do again tonight. Uh, like every night, we're going to begin with prayer and then a group that we've grown to love uh, by the name of Of The Day is going to be here to sing for you. And then my family will be coming to sing. And then a little later, uh, Brother D.R. Harrison with Voice of Hope Ministry is going to be presenting another message from God's Word. And we are excited about what God is going to do tonight, what He's already done but what he's going to do tonight and also into the future as we contemplate what he has put into our heart as a result of being together this week. Now, we want you to continue to help us get this all over the world uh, by liking and sharing uh, this Facebook page with all of your friends and your family. So continue to do our, your part, and we'll do our part, and we'll see what God is going to do. Um, through this effort. So let's bow our hearts together right now and we'll pray and then we'll hear some music from our friends of the day. Heavenly Father, Lord in Jesus name, Lord we just want to give you the glory for what you have done. Great things you have done. Lord we are just offering ourselves as vessels whereby you can use us to present the gospel. Lord through music and through message Lord, there's nothing good in and of ourselves. Lord, it is only by your grace and by your strength and by your power that anything can be done that's going to count for eternity. You have told us in your word that if anything, Lord, is going to bring glory unto you, it is going to be not by might nor by power, but by your spirit, saith the Lord. And so we invite you, O God, into this place tonight. We pray for a special anointing of your spirit upon each song and upon the message that's going to be presented. I pray, O God, that you would bring encouragement to those who need encouragement tonight. Lord, I pray that you would share, Lord, with them, Lord, how much you love them tonight by way of the message. And I pray for those who are still lost and without Christ, that they would make a decision tonight to confess their sin and to plead the blood of Jesus and ask for the mercy of God to be upon them so that they too can have eternal life and hope, Lord, not only in this life, but in the life to come. Lord, we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring, but God, we know that you are in control. And Lord, whatever happens in our lives today, 
Lord, we can have confidence, Lord, that you have been in control of it all. And so, Lord, I pray that tonight that you would do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think as we give this night completely, Lord, unto you. Now, bless it, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen to our good friends of the day.
spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory. That sealed the promise, your buried body began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me.
I'm glad he's my hope tonight. Praise the Lord. Thank you for tuning in on this Friday night, night five of the Global Awakening. We had no idea two weeks ago when God put this on my heart. We had no idea what God had planned, but I'm thankful that he knows best and he can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever think or ask. And uh, God has been so good this week. Um, as of today, uh, we have heard from people from all over the world that have trusted Christ during these nights together, and uh, we're so thankful for what God has done. I'm glad that God's not confined, confined to just a building or a tent or, or a structure that we may think that He should be in, but God can go out over the airways, over the internet, over Facebook, over Twitter, and he can speak to hearts because the power is in the gospel. And we're thankful for what God has done. Uh, as of now, of what we know of, uh, there's been over 130 people uh, call on Christ and trust him as their Savior. And we have uh, reached out to people through the means of the Internet to 36 states and 10 countries around the world. And that's a God thing. Only God can do that. And uh, we're thankful for that. So we need your help. We want to make this the biggest night of the entire week. You say, DR, how can you do that? Well, on the bottom left-hand uh, side of your cell phone, there's a little button that says share. If you'll just hit that share button, we would sure appreciate it. And like this video and pray for us and tag your friends in it. And uh, if you have any lost family members, any lost friends, uh, get them on this live stream tonight. And uh, we sure appreciate all those that have supported us. Thank you, Nikki and Daniel and Rachel, uh, for the tremendous singing this week. And uh, we are so thankful for them. And uh, now it's time for the Allen family. I sure do love them and uh, thankful for what they mean to our family and the ministry. Brother Todd, you just mind the Lord. There is no program tonight. Love you. Thank you, brother. Love you too. Let's go with you. Let's acknowledge his presence here among us. Give him the glory. Do his name. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. 
Shout to the Lord how great thou art. I'm telling you tonight, whenever fear seemed to overcome you, all you have to do is shout to the Lord how great he is. There is nothing, I say there is nothing that compares to the promise that we have in him. And one promise that he has given to us is that he will never leave us nor forsake us, even when the way is discouraging, even whenever our path is hard to trod, he is there to help us every mile of the way. So if you get discouraged, if you begin to have feelings of fear, why don't you just stop and say how great my God is and that he will never leave me nor forsake me. Well, here's a song that we want to sing, and if you know it, we want you to kind of sing along in your heart, and you can sing with your lips if you'd like. And uh, as we said at the first night, just sing out loud and make your neighbors wonder what's going on in your house. Amen. We've got the victory in the Lord Jesus. And uh, here's the song that we're going to sing that talks about our friend that is better than any other friend that we could ever have. Here we go. Ready? There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus, no, not one, no, not one. None else could heal all our soul's diseases, no, not one, no, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles, he will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. There's not an hour that he is not near us. No, not one. No, not one. No night so dark but his love can cheer us. No, not one. No, not one. Did e'er a saint find his friend, forsake him? No, not one, no, not one. Or sinner find that he would not take him? No, not one, no, not Hang one. On now. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one, no, not one. Was there a gift like the Savior given? No, not one, no, not one. Will he refuse us a home in heaven? No, not one, no, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. That's so good. We have a friend. In Jesus, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. What a friend we have in Jesus. One of the things that we're hoping to accomplish by putting these events together all this week is to get the gospel, the good news, to as many people as we possibly can. We want you to be liking and sharing with everyone that you have on your friends and family list. Also, we would love for you to comment who you are and where you're watching from and if you have any questions about um, revival or how to be saved we want to know about that so we can help you and all of those things as well we believe that God is going to use this circumstance that we're presently in for our good and for his glory and so if you would like to know how you could be a part of receiving the goodness of God in the midst of dark and depressing days we have hope for you tonight um, the world needs to know what to hold on to, what to believe, what to trust in. And here's a song that Christians have historically believed throughout the year. And this is something that each of us tonight need to embrace as this is what we believe. Listen. In this time of desperation, when all we know is doubt and fear, 
There's only one foundation We believe We believe And in this broken generation When all is dark you help us see Salvation, we believe, we believe. that you all believe that tonight. The Bible says, With the heart man believeth unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Right now, right where you are, you can call upon the name of Jesus. Confess him to be the Lord of your life, and he'll save you if you believe these things that we just sang about. I'm glad for Jesus. I'm glad that he is a friend like none other. My daughter sings a song that many of you know that is a blessing to so many of us and it's our testimony as Christians. Once you have found the one who is the lover of your soul, once you find how sweet he is, 
to you personally, you would rather have that one than anything else this world could offer. And I hope that you'll be blessed as Danielle sings for you one of my favorite songs, I'd Rather Have Jesus. Praise God. That's wonderful. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world can afford. My, I love that song. Good gracious. I know I'd rather have Jesus than anything. He means more to me than words can even put in, I can even describe more than my mind can fathom, more than there's any vocabulary to even articulate what the Lord means to me tonight. He saved me when I was at my worst. 
loved me, changed me, and uh, he's my best friend. And in these days of chaos, I'm glad that we have the Holy Spirit living inside of us that can speak peace to our hearts during these times we're living in. Thank you, Allens. I don't believe I've ever heard you sing any better than tonight. I have a message on my heart for this final night. Many have asked us to keep going. Unfortunately, we do not have the ability to do that, but we will be announcing in the days ahead future revivals as God leads. But I'm going to ask each and, one, each and every one of you that's watching tonight to grab your Bibles and turn to the book of Revelation, chapter number 20. The book of Revelation, chapter number 20. And we will read just a few verses, and then I will deliver what God has put on my heart. Revelation 20, verse number 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. Now we could stop right here and we could shout for the next five hours because that is a promise in God's word that one day we know the devil is going to be cast into the lake of fire. His days are numbered and he knows that. And I'm thankful. I cannot wait for that day. But the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. There was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. Death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Tonight's message is simply this. Will the family circle be unbroken will the family circle be unbroken heavenly father in Jesus name father lord I ask you one more time to preach me tonight like never before father I pray for every man woman boy and girl that is listening tonight from their home from their work God wherever they are I pray, Lord, for the sweet Holy Spirit to convict hearts. Father, I pray that you would place me in a bubble, block out any distractions. Father, I plead the blood over my mind, the, my speech, my thought pattern. God, may every word that flows out of my mouth be exactly what you want me to say. Father, may you take the word of God and may you penetrate the hearts of people all over the world tonight. Father, may you save every lost person that's listening tonight. Father, for that sinner that's nearest hell, God, may you convert them tonight. Father, I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, as families gather around the phone tonight to listen, God, may they have open hearts to hear the word of God. May the seed of your word go on good ground. And Father, may it take root. And Father, may it last. Father, I ask you now, to preach me as if it's my final time. Father, would you anoint me with words and unction from another world. Father, may you preach me with tears. And Father, Lord, may you allow me to see the faces of lost men and women listening tonight. Father, may you show me, Lord, God, how close they are to eternity. Father, I have your will. Have your way with my life tonight. Now I'll give you all the glory, honor, and praise for it's in your son's name we pray, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. 
Our text tonight finds us landing in the book of Revelation, chapter number 20 and verses 10 through verses number 15. Will the family circle be unbroken? I was reading today of stories of families that have been split apart during this coronavirus pandemic of men that are laid up in a hospital where their wives and children can't come see them where wives are laid up in the hospital where their husband and children can't come see them, where husbands are laid up and wives can't visit them, where parents are laid up and kids can't come visit them, and there is a brokenness in the family as they cannot visit. They can't be there for their loved one. They can't be there to support them and to be with them and to help them in this time of crisis. But much more than being separated with the coronavirus, virus, much more than being separated down here on earth. There's a day coming where there's families that's going to be unbroken, but there's also families that's going to be broken in eternity. The one day there's coming a terrible event where God is going to open up the books and he's going to judge mankind for their works that they have lived in this life. This great and terrible day was prophesied by John the Revelator in the book of Revelation. My friend, there's coming a great and terrible day where every man, woman, boy, and girl that's ever been born is going to be at this event. Every person that's ever lived that dates all the way back to Adam and Eve is going to be present at this event. Imagine the billions and the billions of people dating all the way back to the beginning of mankind that's going to be here at the great white throne. Number one tonight, I want to look at the resurrection. We see in verse number 12 where the Bible says, I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. Every individual that's ever lived is going to stand before God on this day if you rejected Christ. But even those that are saved will be at this event to look on to all of those that are judged by a righteous and a holy God. It says the dead, small and great. That means whether you're a pauper or whether you're a billionaire, you're going to stand before God at this great and terrible day. Every millionaire that's ever lived but rejected God is going to be here. Every poor person that's ever lived and died and rejected Christ is going to be here where God is going to judge men for their evil doings and their wickedness and their depravity. And I'm here to tell you friend, my prayer is tonight that whether you're old or young, rich or poor, whether you are on the other side of the tracks of Atlanta or whether you're in the mountains of Tennessee or in the jungles of Africa my prayer is tonight that before this service ends and this revival ends I pray that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords speaks to your heart and you trust him as your personal savior because even as bad as the coronavirus is even as chaotic as the world is tonight there's a great and terrible day coming where God's going to judge mankind and my friend tonight don't let your circle be broken. Don't let your family be broken on the other side. Hallelujah to God. Oh, I feel the Lord tonight. My prayer is tonight that the power of a living God will convict you wherever you are and save you by the power of a living God. Will the family circle be unbroken? The resurrection of the dead, small and great, will stand before God. We see not only the resurrection, but we see the reunion that's dreadful. Now we talk about family reunions. We think about all the family getting together, eating some fried chicken, getting around the table and telling stories, getting together and just having a good time. But my friend, this is a reunion that is going to be dreadful. Imagine as billions of people, a sea of people standing before God. And beside God you have all the saints that have trusted him. But as we look out over the sea of people 
as one by one God calls each individual person up and he's going to judge them. Imagine the terror at that reunion day. Imagine in your heart tonight how dreadful that day is going to be. Listen to me now. This is what I believe. I believe the great white throne is going to take place in heaven. I believe this event is going to take place in heaven. And I believe as all of these people that are waiting to be judged before a holy God, I believe they're going to stand there and they're going to get to see what they rejected they're going to get to see what they could have had they're going to get to see what they could have had if they'd have trusted Christ on that great and terrible day honey this is going to be a reunion that you don't want to go to this is going to be a reunion that's not going to end well for billions and billions of people alike but my friend tonight you can sign your ticket to heaven today all you got to do is put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He said if you come to him, he didn't know why he's cast you out. There's never been a sinner too dark that God can't save. There's never been a sinner too bad that God wouldn't save. Thanks be to God. If God saved me, God can save you. God can change your life. You just got to trust him and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. But we see the reunion that is dreadful. Take the worst day of your life and you can't even come close to what this dreadful event is going to be. Imagine a daddy and a mama that's standing beside the throne that loved God, was born again. But imagine them having to look out and see their kids that rejected God coming up to be judged by a holy God. Imagine a daddy that never would go to church with his family. Imagine a daddy that always had better things to do, he thought. Imagine a daddy that always wanted to work all the time and play all the time, and drink all the time. Imagine that daddy as God Almighty over the portals of heaven calls his name as he looks up in the grandstand of heaven and he sees his wife standing there. He sees his baby standing there as he trembles, as he comes up to a holy God and as God opens up the book of works and says, hey boy, you remember when they invited you to church? You remember when they begged you to go to church? You remember when they tried to witness to you and you rejected me. You say, dear, I don't believe this. Honey, there's a great and terrible day coming. There's a day coming where families are going to be broken. Husbands are going to be separated from their wives. Parents are going to be separated from their children. But it don't have to end like that. Jesus is the answer. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. Come to Jesus today before it's too late. Will the family circle be unbroken at this reunion there's a reason for why this reunion's taking place what is the reason it's for mankind to stand before a thrice holy God and he's going to open the books not the book but books the Bible says the Bible says Another book was opened, which is the book of life. Now, let me just stop right here. If this is the great white throne where God judges those that have rejected Christ, why would the book of life be here? Why would he have the book of life at this event? Everyone that's here to be judged is obviously lost. They've already signed their death warrant with God. They're as good as in the lake of fire. They're just waiting to be judged. But why would God have the book of life here? I'll tell you why I believe he's got the book of life here. Because one final time, he's going to look in that book and he's going to show them their name isn't there. You say, I don't believe it. You can believe what you want to believe. I believe God's a righteous God. God is a just God. And God is a holy God. And imagine every individual that stands before God. Imagine them looking at God saying, Oh, but God, you've got to be wrong. Didn't I prophesy in your name? Didn't I cast out devils? 
miracles in your name. Didn't I do many wonderful works in your name? God, my name's got to be in that book. God, look at that book one more time. God, open it up and look at it one more time. And God, because he's holy. God, because he is just. God, because he's God. He's going to open up that book one more time. Right before they cast you in the lake of fire. My friend, tonight, I'm glad my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. On May the 20th, 2016, I know my name's written down. Hallelujah to God. I know that I know that I know I'm on my way to heaven. We see where he has the book of life. But then we see the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Now in the word of God, the word of God mentions hell. But nowhere does it give any inclination that there's different degrees of punishment in hell. Hell and the lake of fire are two different places. In hell, as far as I know from the studies I've done, whether you're a serial rapist right now in hell or a lost church member that died without God, the punishment's the same in hell. You're suffering the same punishment. Whether you heard the gospel a million times or whether you never went to church and you was just an old pervert, you're suffering the same amount of punishment in hell but when it comes to the lake of fire when it comes to this last day of judgment that God hands down on mankind he's going to bring the dead up He's going to bring death and hell out of hell if you will He's going to bring all of those that are in hell to stand before Him and at that final day of judgment God's going to open up the book of works and what is the book of works? Every time you heard the gospel and rejected it. God's going to crank up that temperature on hell. Every time that you played a game with God, put on your religious cloak of righteousness, if you will, knew that everything wasn't right in your heart, lived a double lifestyle, if you will, played games with God, God's going to show you where you rejected Him. He's going to turn that punishment up on hell. Every time you heard John 3.16 and laughed at it, he's going to turn that punishment up on hell. Every time you sang in the choir knowing you were sleeping around with the neighbor, he's going to turn that punishment up on hell. Every time you had an opportunity to do business with God, he's going to have it written down in the book of works. He's going to say, hey, John, step forward. John's going to step forward. He's going to say, hey, remember when you was at church on that Sunday morning? Remember you kept looking at your watch? Remember you kept scrolling on your phone? Remember you was laughing at that preacher? Remember you was laughing at that singer? Remember you were making fun of them? There's somebody over here in Africa that never even had the, the, the privilege of hearing the gospel. But I loved you so much, I'll let you hear it. And you rejected it. The degree of the lake of fire. It's going to be cranked up by a thrice holy God. And the more you heard and the more you rejected, the hotter and the worse it's going to get on you. You're not going to be able to stand before God and say, God, I didn't know. I'm going to say this right here to however many that's watching on the other side. Every one of you are without excuse now. You've been warned. You're not going to stand before God and say, God, I didn't know. God, I never heard the gospel. God, I never had an opportunity because God keeps a flawless record. His record is perfect. And this day is being recorded in the book of works. And if you reject God tonight, God's keeping a record, honey. And one day you'll stand before God and you'll be reminded that on April the 3rd, 2020, God gave you a chance by sending a bald headed preacher to preach to you over the internet and to tell you that yes the lake of fire is real yes the great white throne is real but there's a God in heaven that loves you so much he gave his only begotten son and he can save you right where you are tonight sitting in your living room will the family circle be unbroken the reason for this Mankind must be finally judged forever. But then we see there's a record. Not the record book. Not the Lamb's book of life. 
But now we see the record of their departure. Imagine with me, as John walks up, he stands there with two angels, one on each side, as he bows a knee, because the Bible says every knee's going to bow and every tongue's going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Imagine as John is trembling, as he's got a oh, thrice holy God reading out the book of works. Imagine what that departure is going to be like. The moment that God says, take him, bind him hand and foot, and cast him in the lake of fire. Imagine as his family looks over the banister rail of heaven. I imagine them kids screaming out saying, Daddy, oh, Daddy, I love you, Daddy. Daddy, why didn't you get saved, Daddy? Daddy, why didn't you just come to church, Daddy? Daddy, it didn't have to be like this. All you had to do was just believe, Daddy. All you had to do was just trust the Lord, Daddy. And I can imagine their Daddy looking back at them, saying, baby, I love you. I'm so sorry I didn't come. I'm so sorry I didn't believe. But baby, I love you. Baby, I love you. Don't ever forget that, baby. I love you. And as the angels bind them hand and foot and cast them into the lake of fire forever and forever. You say, DR, this scares me. I hope it scares the devil out of you because this is real. There is a real judgment day coming and you better be ready. Will the family circle be unbroken? How many families are watching tonight that if Jesus came back now, that family would be broken? Daddy and mama would go, brother and sister would stay, or mama would go and daddy would stay, or daddy would go and everybody else would stay. I wonder how many people online watching tonight where the kids would go, but daddy and mama would still be left sitting on the couch holding the phone, all because you didn't believe, didn't want to believe, or just didn't have time. For Jesus. You say, DR, is it true that Christians have to look on to this? Absolutely. We're going to have a front row seat to the terror that's going to take place. The tears aren't wiped away to the next chapter, verse number four. There's a reason for that, mother. There's a reason why your tears aren't going to be wiped away till chapter 21. Because this is going to be a terrible event. We're going to weep. We're going to scream. We're going to physically just wail under the brokenness of seeing people we love cast into the lake of fire. My friend, this is reality. We see the reason. We see the record that is disturbing. What's the record that's disturbing? Imagine as God one by one judges the evil of mankind and one by one they get cast in the lake of fire now listen to this everyone that gets cast into the lake of fire is somebody's family member it's going to be somebody's daddy it's going to be somebody's daughter it's going to be somebody's brother or sister or grandma or grandpa and that's why as Christians we must do everything we can to try to pull them out of the fire. You say they get mad at me, I would rather make somebody mad than to walk by them and not try to get them out of hell. Oh my God, if we could just see how terrible this event's gonna be, we'd do everything we could. We'd beg them, we'd plead with them, we'd drag them to church, we'd beg them to listen to the gospel. But my friend, unfortunately, there's people all over the world that reject Jesus Christ every day. And my friend, but you don't have to. Your chance is now. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. You can call on the Lord and he will change your life. You don't have to experience this day of tragedy that's coming. Will the family circle be unbroken? We see also 
the reality. What is the reality? The reality is, listen closely. Every person that's judged on that day that takes that walk from the throne of God to the pit of the lake of fire, the reality is they know they're never going to see their family again. They know that as they walk down that path to the pits of hell, they see all of the heaven they're ever going to see right before they get cast into the lake of fire. Imagine with me. Think about it. Imagine having to stand and see heaven while you're judged forever. Imagine as they drag you to the pits of an eternal lake of fire. All you see is the glory of heaven. All you see is what you could have had. But you know the reality is you are damned forever. God, that breaks my heart knowing there's people I know that are going to take that path and I'm going to have to stand there and watch them. I'm going to have to watch them take that long walk, their final walk, their final destination, if you will, while their family screams, saying, why didn't you just trust Jesus? Now, some of you are watching and you're thinking, I don't believe none of that. He's just making it sound worse than what it is. We got a bigger problem on our hands, DR. We got to worry about this pandemic. We got to worry about this virus. We got to worry about all this stuff. We got to worry about this right now. You're just preaching something that's prophetic, supposedly, that was written thousands of years ago that's going to happen somewhere way down the road. We'll just deal with that. But right now, more importantly, we got to deal with this virus thing, honey. You better get that off your mind because I'm telling you, you've not seen chaos yet. You've not seen tragedy yet. You've not seen anything yet, honey, to this great and terrible day. And it's going to be broken hearted for me standing there seeing so many people I love that's going to be cast into the lake of fire. But I'm telling you what, I'd rather be on that side of the banister rail than to take that long walk to the lake of fire. And all it takes is you ain't got to be a Baptist. You ain't got to be a Methodist. You ain't got to be a Pentecostal. You ain't got to ride a bus route or put money in the offering plate. You ain't got to go get baptized. You must first put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus. Christ and he'll save you and change your life for time and for eternity will the family circle be unbroken I heard this story I'll try to tell it the way I heard it there's a young lady in Mississippi she was in her 20's she had had problems most of her teenage years with crack cocaine and drugs. She had three boys, 11, 9, and 7. She couldn't hold down a job. They ended up living on food stamps and welfare. And most of the time, the kids went hungry because she was too busy smoking everything away. One night, three of her buddies came over and she decided to leave those three kids at home by themselves to go out and party with her three friends. They started smoking dope and drinking and got pulled over by the cops and taken to jail. Her neighbors called in. Those three little boys was walking around in the street hungry, no clothes on, looking for their mama. When her court date arrived, social services had gotten the children. When her court date arrived, they brought her into the courthouse. Social services brought those three kids and sat them in on the back row of the courthouse. By their way of testimony in the story I read, those kids started screaming for their mother. They started screaming saying, we want to see our mama. We want to see our mama. It got so noisy in the courtroom, the judge ordered the bailiff to take the kids out into the hallway until the court proceeding was over. The court began to move forward with the proceeding, but the kids became so panicked and disruptive in the hallway that the bailiff came back in and said, Judge, excuse me and forgive me, 
But the kids are so out of control. They've got to see their mama. We can't keep them calm. Would you please consider just letting them come and hug their mama and see their mama for just a few minutes? The judge looked at that woman and said, you listen to me closely. I'm only going to allow this because of them kids. But you figure out what you're going to say. You get in your mind what you want to tell them kids because you're never, ever, ever going to see them again. The woman began to weep. The bailiff brought the kids in and turned them loose. They ran up to their mother and began hugging on their mother. They began weeping and crying, saying, Mama, I love you. We we don't want you to go to jail, Mama. We love you so much. The oldest boy looked at his mama and said, Mama, I'll learn how to cook for us. You ain't got to worry about cooking for us. You ain't even got to take care of my brothers. I'll do that, Mama, but I don't want to lose you, Mommy. I don't want to lose you. And that woman looked at her kids and said, I love you, but the judge is telling me I'm not going to see you again. I've been a bad mother. I've made some bad decisions, but I love you, boys. I love you, kids. And the screaming and the wailing they said in that courtroom was unlike they'd ever heard before as they pulled those kids from her mother and they took those kids outside to never see their mama again and that's much going to be like the same way at this terrible event as daddy and mamas and kids look at each other. I can imagine God maybe saying you need to say your final words to your family. You need to come up with your final words. What are you going to say to them before it's your time to be judged? You say I don't believe it honey. It's going to be a day that I we've never seen before. Don't let your final words be goodbye. Don't let your final words be I wish I would have. Don't let your final words be if I could have I'd do it over. But you can change that now. You can seal your eternal destiny. You can trust Christ and he'll save you by the power of God. Will the family circle be unbroken? Will your family circle be unbroken? Let me ask you this. If you died right now, do you know without a shadow of a doubt you're saved? You say, DR, I've heard enough of this. I'm logging off. Before you do, I'm going to tell you my final words to you. If you're going to reject the truth, You're going to gamble with your soul. You're going to play Russian roulette with your eternity. I want you to look at your wife right now. Look at your husband right now. Look at your kids right now. And I want you to hug them with the biggest hug you've ever done. I want you to tell them you love them more than you ever have. I want you to spend the rest of your days loving on them and being close to them. Because, honey, there's coming a day where your family's going to be broken forever because of your eternal decision to not put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you understand that almost four years ago, I felt the same way? I thought God was just a fairy tale. I thought my family was just a bunch of fogies. I thought this Bible was just a book. I thought this whole judgment, this whole rapture, This whole heaven and hell was just all make-believe. I felt like that my ideologies and my opinions trumped God's word. I felt like I knew more, much like some of you watching tonight is. You feel like you got everything figured out based off what a doctor said or a scientist said or some school teacher said or some some theory that was put out there or some engineer or architect or whatever you want to call it, some scientist, somebody gave you something that you could latch on to to convince you that all this God stuff isn't real. All of this stuff's fairy tale. There's no heaven. There's no hell. Everybody's just going to go back to what they were. Honey, you've been fed a lie of the devil. I'm here to tell you just as much as hell is real, there's a heaven that's real just as much as God is real there's a Satan that's real and just as much as I'm standing here preaching to you you're either going to go to heaven or you're going to go to hell and God don't make that decision for you honey you've got to make that decision you've got to come to the realization that you are going to go to hell with without God if you don't trust him my friend tonight in this final moment that I'm preaching I beg you with every fiber of my being don't go to hell don't reject 
God. Don't die without Christ. You can know that you know that you're saved by the power of God. The question is, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to trust Christ? Or are you going to reject Him? Are you going to choose to believe what TV tells you? Are you going to choose to believe what somebody's idea is based off no facts whatsoever? You say, well, what facts do you have? Right here. 66 books that tells everything that you need to know. It's the whole map of your life written in black ink on white paper. You say, I still don't believe it. That's fine. That's perfectly okay. Hell's full of people just like you that didn't believe. And you'll soon join them there because of your unbelief. But you'll never stand before God and say, God, you never gave me a chance. Because just as sure as the presence of God is here while I'm preaching, as strong as it can ever be, I know that he's speaking to somebody on the other side of that phone. And it doesn't matter if you grew up in church. doesn't matter if the church made you mad. doesn't matter if you're drunk. doesn't matter if you're a dopehead. doesn't matter if you're a homosexual. doesn't matter about any of that. God will save you just the same. He'll take you just as you are. Just as I am. Without one plea, God will bring you to the altar at the foot of the cross. He'll take his red blood. He'll wash all that black sin away. You'll come up whiter than snow. You can secure your eternal destination in heaven, but you have to be the one to do it. God extends his hands of mercy. God sent his son to die. He's done his part. Everybody says that salvation was free. Salvation isn't free. God gave his only begotten son. It cost God his only son. But it is a free gift from God to mankind. And all you got to do is accept the free gift of salvation. Why would anybody turn down a free gift if I stood here tonight and said, I have a cure for coronavirus. Whether you had it or you didn't, you would take the free gift because you would want to ensure that you would never ever have to worry about ever having that terrible plague again or ever getting it. But yet night after night I stand and say God has given you a free gift. His name is Jesus Christ. It don't cost you nothing. You can seal your eternal destiny by simply putting your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's free for you. And it was free for me. What are you going to do with it? Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for liberty to preach. Father, I pray. Lord, for that person on the other side of the phone. God, if I could pour out my inner being to save I would. But God, for that hardest of hearts, for that one that's broken, whatever shape an individual's in, God, would you save them? God, make the conviction so strong they can't say no to a sweet, loving God. Father, please don't let the devil distract those that are needing to do business with you. God in heaven, do what only you can do. If you're on the other side of the phone listening, here's your chance to be saved. Do you know salvation is so simple a little child can understand it? Just as every night, here's how you be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. All have sinned, Romans 3 says. All have sinned. You're a sinner. I'm a sinner. 
You was born in sin. I was born in sin. We're all sinners. We've all come short of the glory of a thrice holy God. But the story don't end there. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. If you die the way you are, if you live, continue to live the way you are, you will die the way you are. And the fact that sin is in your nature, it will will seal your eternal destiny in the lake of fire. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but that verse don't end there. There's one word there that I love so much. That word is but. But God. I love that. For the wages of sin is death, but eternal life comes through Jesus Christ. He is the answer. He is the way. He is the truth. That verse says it is a gift. It's a free gift given from God to you. You say, how, how do I do this? I had a boy the other night call me and said, DR, I've never been in church. said, how do I even be saved? This is exactly what I did. And I want you to do the same. If you want to be saved, say this with me. God, I am a sinner. God, I know I'm lost. God, I know that if I don't trust you, I'll have to go to the awful place the preacher preached tonight. Father, I believe in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ. God, I'm putting my trust in you right now. God, will you do for me what you did for that preacher? Will you take the drugs away? Will you take the bitterness away? Will you take the alcohol away? And God, will you change me? Change my life. I'm trusting you and putting my faith in your darling son. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you just said that prayer and meant it in all your heart, we want to hear from you. There's phone numbers set up that they're putting on the screen. You can call that number. You can dial into the website. You can leave us a comment, a message. We want to send you a Bible. We want to speak with you. You say, DR, I'm not so sure yet. Call us. We would love to speak with you and lead you to the Lord. I get up every day to try to see somebody saved. Rachel, that's what drives me. Is to see people come to Christ. Because one day that's all that's going to matter. Your money is not going to matter over there. Your houses and cars aren't going to matter. Your abilities and talents are not going to matter. The only thing that matters is what you've done with Jesus Christ. Not long ago, I was sitting in a restaurant. Mother, every time I buy a meal, they bring me a receipt. And on that receipt, the top copy for the restaurant, I always write, Jesus loves you. John 3.16. It seems so insignificant to many but there's enough gospel in those three words to save anybody and a few weeks ago I went to a restaurant that I frequently visit and the waitress that waited on me the day that I was there last and left that note she walked up to me and she said you're that preacher I said I don't think I remember you She said, you were just in here not too long ago and on that receipt, you wrote three words, Jesus loves you, John 3, 16. She said, I'd never read that verse before. And she said, I went on my break and I Googled that verse and I read it. And she said, I can't explain it, but something started happening inside of me. 
And she said, I didn't know nothing to do. But she said, but how could Jesus love somebody like me? And she said, all I knew to do, I kept reading that verse. And she said, I never even prayed before. She said, I, on my break, I just bowed my head. And I said, Jesus, if what this says is true and you're real, will you love somebody like me? She didn't say the prayer that most people would think she needed to say. It wasn't written out in script for her to read her them. There wasn't a crowd around to gloat in front of. But it was three simple words. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. And that same words can change anybody on the other side of that fold. No matter what you've done. No matter where you've been. No matter how bad you are. Jesus loves you. And Jesus died for you. And Jesus can change your life. That waitress sealed her eternal destiny from a white paper receipt with three words on it. You can do the same tonight. You say, DR, I said a prayer when I was a child. I don't know if I'm saved. I'm not sure. There's no better way than to find out tonight. The Bible says we can know we have eternal life. No doubting, no thinking, no hoping, no working hard to get it. You can know you can solidify your eternity tonight and you can know from here on out heaven's my home. But you have to make that choice. If I could save you, God knows my heart. I would die today for you to be saved. But I can't save nobody. you got to do it. Please let us know if you trusted Christ. We want to rejoice with you. We want to praise the Lord with you. This whole revival was centered around if just one got saved, it had been worth it all for one, Nikki. Just one. But I believe there's as many getting saved tonight as there's been the whole week. There's one I'm burnt up. Don't turn God away. The day I got saved, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, If you tell me no today, I'll never speak to you again. I just about walked away from my final time, and there's no doubt I'd be in hell tonight. Don't play games with God. Eternity is real. And eternity is too long to be wrong. You better get things settled tonight before it's eternally too late. I want to thank everybody that has tuned in this whole week. Unprecedented what we've done these last weeks, these last days. None of us are really technology minded when it comes to doing online services. We've all kind of had to learn as we go. But God in His amazing grace has helped us. But thank you for tuning in, praying for us. This is off the cuff, but I want the Allens to close us out with Jesus as supernatural. Some of you may have to log off, I understand, but those that are left can enjoy it and you can come back and watch it later if you got to leave. We've not done this all week, but most of you know. Most of y'all know that Voice of Hope's full-time. The Allen family is full-time. We don't work regular jobs. They've been in ministry how long? 24 years they've done this by faith three and a half years going on four my wife and I has done this by faith 
God's always provided. But during these times where many's losing their jobs, we've had two months worth of meetings canceled. And living by faith, we have to depend on God to provide, and He always does. But we also know that you have not because you ask not. We want to give each of you an opportunity to be a part of what God's doing. You have to realize every dollar that you sow into a ministry that's winning souls, you get rewards for that. This isn't a sales pitch. Some of you will never be a preacher. Some of you may never be called to be a missionary. But if you can invest in a ministry that God's using to reach sinners, God will reward you for every soul that ministry wins. I'm asking each of you tonight to click on the link, the Allen's website, Voice of Hope's website, and donate financially to help us to continue to get the gospel out to a lost and a dying world. You say, I don't have much. A dollar? Two dollars? Two years ago, eight homeless men sowed two dollars and three cents into Voice of Hope. It's all they had. God took that two dollars and three cents that is still in a glass case that I see every day. He turned that two dollars and three cents into a 1,500 seat tent with all the equipment. And every time somebody gets saved, those eight homeless men that I won to Christ in Greensboro, North Carolina, God's laying up rewards for those eight African-American homeless men. So prayerfully consider sowing into the ministry tonight. There's a donate button. The link that's being pasted, you can click on that or you can go to Allen's website, click on their site to give. Help us get through these next couple months. But most of all, pray that God will keep using us to reach this lost and dying world. Y'all ready to sing? Sing it as if you're singing it right in front of the Lord and all the angels of heaven. Jesus is supernatural. Oh 
Jesus. Go and tell someone about the lovely Lord Jesus and what he has done in your heart and in your life. Let's let the revival fires continue to grow across our land and around the world in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you for tuning in. Thank you for being so much a part of what we have been doing this week. Your presence online every night has been an encouragement. Your prayers are being answered, and we're grateful to you for all of your participation. Now, keep praying with us that God would continue to do his work that he has started in the hearts of you and me and all people around the world. God bless you. Thank you again.